You know what today is. Foodie Friday. So, let's get started. With more of the Steve Dahl Show. Foodie Friday on the, we do it, you know, it's just another Foodie Friday on WLS AM 890, but it's the Last Supper. Oh, my god. On gosh. the Loop 97.9. Oh, yeah. I got to eat on the air. I got to eat on 97.9 one more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one last time, smacking the lips and whatnot. <laughs> and joining us in studio from Fat Chris's Pizza and Such at 1706 West Foster in Chicago. We've got Nick, Nick, and I'm Mike. And Mike. Now, Fat uh, Fat Chris's we learned a couple weeks ago has Detroit style pizza. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent some time in Detroit, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, became very uh, very familiar with the pizza up there and quite fond of it. Uh, you even knew some of the places that maybe served as a reference point for for these guys. Well, Buddies and Shields were the two places we went. Yeah. Uh, and we had to kind of go down into Hamtramck, the Hamtramck area. To that's where they were. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I have not had any yet, but this pizza definitely looks like Detroit pizza. And for the people who, who don't know the difference, well, how would you describe D Detroit pizza? Us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we could let Brendan I mean, or Don take, take a stab at it, I'll but I don't think they, it, I don't <laughs> think they know. It's a. Uh... It's from Detroit. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, <coughs> it looks uh, shaped like a car. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's square. We it, cook it in a Detroit steel pan, like the kind they used to use in the automotive industry. So, it's a square pan, and then so like, sorry. really from the automotive industry? Well, the ones we got were brand new. I so. mean, but I mean, that's how it started. Yeah, I think that's how buddies who originated it. They uh they started by uh. You, that, like an oil pan or something? or Yeah, like kind of you put oh. parts in when you're taking... Oh, right, okay, yeah. right down the line or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's blue steel. Wow, really? Causes the cheese to caramelize around the edges. So the square shape, uh, Wisconsin brick cheese mm -hmm. uh, with the caramelized edges. And then the two stripes which um, of sauce on the top. Right. They, they call them racing stripes, I guess. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. yeah. We yeah. Just, you know, we just call them stripes. <laughs> now, you brought a bucket of sauce over here, and I sauced my own pizza. Did I oversauce? I kind of... I, really I imagine you did. That's up to you. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> no, I, not I, at all, Brendan. No. <laughs> no. Put three or four cups of, of sa sauce on one slice of pizza. Yeah. Just because there's a big, giant thing of it doesn't mean you have to use it all. Why, 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 is, why, why is the sauce kept separately, then, from, from the pizza? Well, it normally won't if you come in. It's just for our trip over here. We kept it separate so they wouldn't like, hit you, the box and stuff like that. Usually you ladle like a couple of ladles across the top of it, right? Yeah, a couple it'll, of be, yeah it'll be right across the, mm. just two stripes across the, the top. That's so. for extra sauce. It's where, um, very good. I approve. <laughs> yeah, we need the sauce over here. <laughs> right, I'm going to put a little sauce on too, but I got to say it's very good without the sauce. Yeah. yeah. So. No. Kind of the other distinct like Detroit style is that it's got a much, uh, it seems similar to like a Chicago deep dish style, but it's uh, a much more airy Crust. Uh, it's much more like a focaccia bread. Springier crust, that sounds like. Yeah. 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 And yeah. The, the way the cheese caramel, caramelizes around the, the edges is really... Oh, this is good. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> and the, the restaurant, Fat Chris, is it's named after your brother? Yeah, loosely. Our old, our, it's not our brother. It's what he used to be. Oh, he <laughs> lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he had lost he's... a lot of weight. And, yeah. and uh, Mike and I were uh, at a water park, and... Uh, there was a guy we kept we run into him ran into him several times that day, and we kept going. Look, it's Fat Chris. <laughs> the same size as Fat Chris. Yeah, what he <laughs> was well, or is. Well, no, the whole everything looked like him. Oh, his right. face, his size. As you can obviously see, we're we're bigger guys. Uh -huh. And our brother was at one point two, uh -huh. and then he lost the weight. Uh -huh. But we can't we can't let that go. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I feel you. Yeah. You guys look completely normal to me. <laughs> These two guys look like they just came uh, out of a UNICEF commercial. <laughs> Dog and Brendan. <laughs> and no meat on their bones. Uh, Pass the sauce then, I say. Right, yeah. That is really good stuff. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. He needs a sauce over here. 
Oh, I'll, 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 you go I'll help. Yeah, I'll give you a little. Yeah. A little. So now, uh, it's Fat Chris's Pizza and Such, mm-hmm. 1706 West Foster in Chicago, fatchrisspizza.com. But you guys are also going to be at the Brouhaha. That's correct. Tomorrow. And you're serving this. What is this? Uh, our Chubbies. Fat Chris's. I just put that in my mouth and you said chubby, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to put a chubby in my mouth. Try Fat Chris's Chubby Steve. Yeah. Shove it right in your mouth. You know what? It's delicious. Mm-hmm. Ironically, that's exactly what's on the t shirt. <laughs> Fry fat. Really? No. <laughs> it will be now. <laughs> All right. So, and it's, uh, what is it? The chubby. It is, uh, well, you want to. Well, chubbies are basically uh, like... Steve, it's when you get sexually aroused, <laughs> but not to the point where you have an actual erection. There's a general interest. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're basically, it's uh, rolls made with our hand-tossed dough mm-hmm. uh, with provolone and mozzarella cheese with oh, pepperonis mm. all rolled up. Very with, nice. Uh, that's good. And you have that at the restaurant, too? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's, that's and such? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's part of the and such. Yeah. Well, that pizza is good. I'm going to have to take my wife there. Because, I mean, we used to, all of our first date nights were to either Buddies or Shields. Oh, nice. For pizza. Or sometimes to Greek Town. Because yeah. D- Detroit has a pretty sweet Greek town. They oh, used yeah. to, anyway. Mm-hmm. I haven't been there in a while. I don't know. But, man, this is good stuff. Did you feel like as you were bringing Detroit-style pizza into such a notoriously, you know, Chicago, such a pizza town? A lot of did, pressure. Did you feel like there were going to be room for you here amongst all this, you know, Chicago-style pizza? Or um, We've actually, uh, uh, you know, some people, if you look at like our, our reviews, uh-huh. you can tell the Chicagoans who are offended that we even dare mm-hmm. bring something else <laughs> sure. to town. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we we anticipated a little bit of that. Um, Is it room enough in this world for all kinds of, of pizza? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean Chicago. We, you know, we brag about like it's a pizza capital type place, and so it you know it needs to have all the different kinds. Right, of you have things. to have yes. Open your hearts. Open your mouths. <laughs> No, well, it's just people. just across the That's lake. That's the next you know? T-shirt, Brendan. <laughs> oh, I feel hey, it. Hashtag all pizzas matter. <laughs> oh, thank you. All the actual pizzas matter. interesting part there is, uh, we did Detroit style because we love Detroit style, and it's our favorite type of pizza. Uh, we do serve regular traditional hand tossed, mm-hmm. and so but boy, you give a glare if you have get one of those uh, ordered. Oh, fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we wanted to serve it for us, and then it just kind of took off and kind of became its own thing, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's it actually good. was like the last thing that we added to our menu. Yeah, we've, it, we've been planning the business for like four years, and well, and we're like, hey, let's. Now, know. who taught you how to make these things, buddy? Uh, no, the actually. Guy in shields? No, we uh, uh, we we ate at Buddy's as kids. Uh, we're we're from Michigan, but not Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then it started popping up everywhere. Uh, we were in uh, Austin for a while. We lived in Austin, Texas, and uh, there was we uh, all did. We all, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we can, you go down there for for South by Southwest, man. You just fall in love with the place. Yeah. Never come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can't go, keep it weird. So I was yeah. out of there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we tried it there, and and uh, and we, you know that's where we. I forgot Came the up. question. But. <laughs> who taught you? Who taught you, oh, how, to taught you how to make it? Then uh, when I was eating it, I was like, man, this is so good. And then I, you know, remembered, of course, buddies and everything. And and so I just, you know, we I started trying stuff in our kitchen. We've Whoa. been making it for like three years, just in our in our kitchens. Uh, and then uh, then we're like, no, that that would be an awesome. I mean, I guess Chicago has a couple places. But nothing that stands out, and definitely not in the area where we are. Yeah, no, this is a uh, you've mastered it. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> oh, I I've consider myself I would be an expert in yeah. in the in uh, Detroit style pizza, mm-hmm. and you've mastered it. And you, no one needs to take offense because it sort of looks like it might be trying to be a deep dish pizza, but it's not. It's right. totally mm-hmm. different. It's totally different. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's uh, it's um, I would recommend it as a. Um, at least a nice change of pace, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, All right guys. Uh, have fun at uh, the Brew Ha Ha, and uh, expect to see Steve and Janet on date night at Fat Chris's Pizza and Such, 1706 West Foster Avenue in Chicago. Nick and Mike. Thanks, guys. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a simulcast of the Steve Dahl Show on WLS AM 890. Adios, salamanana. The last live show on The Loop. Don't worry, by the end of the night, I'm going to blow this thing wide open. Sponsored by David Hochberg of Pearl Mortgage. Visit PERLDavid.com. All right, it is uh, Steve Dahl Show. 
uh, the Steve Dahl Show as it uh, normally appears on WLS AM 890. Every afternoon from 2 to 6 with Steve Dahl, Doug Julin. Hi. Local uh, musician and bon vivant. Mm. <laughs> He's in Poi Dog in Expo 76. Yeah. And uh, grew up listening to The Loop. Exactly. So it's been kind of fun to watch you react to all this today. Well, it's been just great for me. Not kind of fun. It's been a gas and a giggle. Mm-hmm. Well, I've had a B.A. double L. And uh, Brendan Greeley. Hi. Who is like... Uh, He's like a son to me. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Won't move out. Thank you, Dad. (laughs) Can I borrow a few bucks to go out tonight? It's Friday. So so this is the the last live show on the Loop 97.9 because they're switching over tonight. It got moved up to tonight at midnight. Full 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. God. Yeah. And I've got some information about how you can buy a Loop shirt. I'd like to thank David Hochberg for sponsoring this today because he's uh, he's the man. 312-751-1333. Uh, we're going to talk to some listeners, mm-hmm. and also I'm going to call Janet because she's a big part of it, yep. at least for you know for for me. But before that, say hello to Patty Hayes. Hi, Patty Hayes. How are you, <laughs> Steever? <laughs> I love you, brother. I love you. I laughed. I listen. I laughed out loud with the uh, the bumper back with Purple Hayes. <laughs> you know, to. I'm listening to. on down the line, and I just started laughing. And I have to say that I have not laughed this hard consistently like I have over the last, what, three, three and a half hours? Yeah, three and a half. And yeah. ages. Oh, my God. This is, been, this is like the world's best family reunion, Steve. Good. Good. I'm glad. I mean, oh, my God. I, I just think about all these people that I love so much that we had so much fun with. Yeah, we but did. more than that, I have a question for you. Yes, Are they ma'am. going to perform a stage ceremony in that uh, studio before Jesus takes over? Yeah. Because there was a lot of funky stuff that happened. <laughs> yeah, we're actually in new studios, so those uh, <laughs> those have been left behind. These, I'm sure some funky stuff has gone down in, in these studios as well. If I know Tim Virgin the way I think I do. <laughs> you do. But, uh, oh, that's a frightening thought. Uh, yeah, but certainly the old loop studios. I mean, that, oh my. I hope that the, they had a hazmat crew come up there and take care of that. <laughs> The 35th floor in the Hancock Center. 37th. 37, right. Well, you know what? I kept showing up at the 35th. No, I, they no wonder I lost problem. my job. <laughs> no wonder I lost my job. So now what, uh, so Patty, you were, were you at the Loop twice? I was, Steve, and actually I came in, they find it on uh, Jay Blackburn, his wife, Chancey, right. who I believe is actually the person who came up with the loop. Okay. She, t- she used to tell the story about driving cross country, I think in a Volkswagen. And as she was driving along, she kept thinking about what could we name this radio station? And the only iconic thing she could come up with was the loop. So you had Jay Blackburn, his wife, Chancy, and then you had the creative genius behind it. Dave Logan, Dave Logan, who, yeah. Logan, who, Absolutely. When that station signed on, the he kickstarted the creativity, I think, Steve, for that radio station that set a pace that went for years. Yeah. You know, part of the magic, and as I've been listening to everybody today, uh, I, I just thought to myself, I, what happened there was actual magic. I mean, you and Gary and Johnny yeah. and Buzz and Kevin. And then on the other side, you had Skatefish and Stroud, and I was there. And it it was unbelievable. Yeah. The amount of, and, and down the hallway, even those insane salespeople. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, my God. Those people were crazy. Yeah, but Jeff in Schwartz. A good way. Jeff Schwartz, oh, buddy, <laughs> buddy, do you want to make $100 to go to Flipside Records? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Well, dude. listen, speaking of Flipside uh, Records, I'm going to tell you a story that nobody knows because you asked me if I actually was there twice, and I'll tell you the reason I left in the first place. Okay. And no one knows this story. So uh, Skyboy was coming in. It was after the Chess family sold it to... Uh, Congressman Heftel, right. who, by the way, was about four feet nine, yeah. fell in love shrimp. with me. Yeah, he came up to my boobs, and I think that's why he <laughs> fell in love with me. But that's a story for another day. Well, that's an excellent Anywho. view, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've been told. Anyway, so 
uh, you had uh, Lee Abrams coming in, and I don't know if you remember the program director they had. Jesse Bullitt. Jesse Bullitt, right. Oh, yeah. So they were moving me from 6 to 10 tonight, at night to 10 to 2, and Jesse calls me into his office, and he sits me down, and he says, we've come up with a great way to market you to all of Chicago. We're going to make you famous. And I'm like, really? What's that? <laughs> and he goes, we're going to market nude posters of you, and they're going to be in every Flipside record store in Chicago. Really? And um, and and I was like, uh, um, nude posters? And he goes, <laughs> don't worry. It'll be tasteful. We're going to airbrush out your nipples. And all I could <laughs> see some was my sainted Irish Catholic mother in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was like... Um, geez, Jesse, I'll have to think about that. Wow. And I got up and I, I walked out of the room and called one of my friends and I said, yeah, I, I gotta have a job somewhere else because I was like, I I don't think I want to do that, but he was pretty insistent that I was gonna. That was, that's like your story, like the hashtag, uh, me too. too. Yeah. Yeah. That wow, that's oh, insane. Oh, that, well, no, that I, I mean, it's not, it's not like being mm-hmm. sexually assaulted, but that's still pretty uncool. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, that's the tip of the Me Too iceberg. Oh, I can tell you stories that <laughs> make your hair stand on end. But that's a story. This is a celebration. We're not going down that road. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. That but is, still, oh, I mean, my God. That's that's kind of crazy. He made Steve yeah. the same offer, and Steve yeah. took it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet the, nobody bought the poster. And the flip side oh went out of business God. right after. And that. let me also let me also say the other thing I've been thinking about today too is you know I I was extraordinarily lucky to be you know the girl with all of you guys, and um, very lucky to um, have that opportunity for so many years. And to, you know, um, I'll take a little bow to some pretty great success, but I also will let everybody know it was never really lost on me that I probably could have had that same level of success if I just read the phone book because I know it was the voice, you know? No, no, I I disagree. The voice that that gets you in the door doesn't keep the, it doesn't keep (laughs) you in the room. It just gets you in the door. You know, I, the truth of the matter is, you know, we all are given uh, great breaks. But I will say to a person uh, who populated those radio stations over the years, everybody knew what to do with a great break. Yeah. If you rested on your laurels, you were out the door because that was an intense and competitive group of people. Oh, yeah, but it was. My God, did we have fun. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we and did. And to all the people listening who wondered if we really had that much fun, oh, yeah. Yeah. Times a million. How many people uh-huh. have I I'm sorry. I was just, how many people have I talked to today that are now sober? That'll give you some ideas to how much fun oh, was that. Oh, really? Well, I mean if you, you have know, to go I, sober, you know, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> It is ironic. Yeah. You know, I quit drinking years ago, not because I had to, but because I was working out so much and honestly it came down to this. Would I rather have a glass of champagne or a candy bar and I chose a candy bar. Yeah. And I just kind of walked away from it. So Yeah. Well yeah. Yeah, no, but now uh, I'm I'm living in the Detroit area. I have a fabulous daughter who's at Michigan State. She's a gymnast for them. She walked on. She's been a tremendous asset to them. I'm so proud of her. Great. That's yeah, great. She, she's a little rock star. All right. Well, you so say you're happy, right? Yeah, I'm busy. You know, happy. I'm I'm being very much a troublemaker in every possible way that I can. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. pat, that's the Patty Hayes that I I know. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm actually helping uh, some people here in the state of Michigan uh, put an end to end end to gerrymandering. So, oh, all right, that's kind of a fun thing to be doing. Oh yeah, well it's uh, it's definitely not a cool thing to be doing, but that's uh, <laughs> that's what they. I mean, not you. I mean the people that are doing the gerrymandering. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's got to stop. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, so that's what I'm up to. All right, Patty. Well, thank you for calling us. It was nice to talk to you, and it was always a pleasure to see you. And you uh, too, Steve. and um, I'm sorry about Jesse Bullitt and that naked poster thing. <laughs> First, I love you, Steve. I love you too, Patty. All right, see ya. All right, bye. Patty bye. Hayes. This is a simulcast of the Steve Dahl Show on WLS AM 890. The last live show on the loop. All right, son, the party's over. 
After this, it's over. All over your face. Sponsored by David Hochberg of Pearl Mortgage. Visit PERLDavid.com. The Steve Dahl Podcast. Three brains running so hot, it'll melt your smartphone. Check out a free sample and subscribe today at Dahl.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. It's uh, we're simulcasting live on WLSAM eight ninety and the Loop ninety seven point nine. Steve Dahl, Doc Jill, and Brendan Greeley. Yeah, hello. And uh, a couple things that I would like to make you aware of: the the Loop actually goes off the air tonight at midnight. Good lord! So you might want to tune in for that just to check that out because it's usually pretty weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When a station when a station changes. I remember when I left WDAI. And um, yeah, on a New Year's, like at midnight, New Year's uh, Eve, 1978, they switched from, uh, you know, rock and to disco. And they played uh, the day of the music, you know, the oh, American Pie. Yeah. yeah. And then I forget, I think it was Donna Summers. I, I can't really can't remember what they played because I kind of turned it off. Mm-hmm. And started hatching a plan to kill disco. I'll have my revenge. Mission accomplished. Mm-hmm. All right, so the loop, uh, loop goes off at midnight, uh, but it lives on forever, WLUP.com. You can stream it there even after it goes off the air. And uh, also listen at uh, 101.1 HD2. And uh, you, uh, if you're looking to maybe, uh, you're like, what did I do with that loop shirt of mine? Uh-huh. Don't worry about it. We've got a limited edition. Well, yeah, it's yeah. A, they, like going out of business sale, right? Uh huh. All you need to do it's twenty bucks. That's your uh, your uh, looper price, as, as they say. Uh, it's twenty bucks. Text the word shirt s h i r t to three one two nine seven nine three one two the area code nine seven nine the frequency in case you forget three one two nine seven nine shirt. And they will get back to you. And I mean, I don't even know how, maybe it's automated and it just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But every time I talk about this, our boss Marv comes in and goes, you just sold another $10,000 worth of shirts. And I'm like, why didn't I cut some kind of a deal with him? I cut no deal with him. <laughs> yep. Oops. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you tell every, make sure you tell Mary Burner about it. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, We're going to talk. Also, I did. I've reached out in every way I know possible to Gary Meyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, you know, if you listen to our show on WLS, you know that I'm fine. You know, I'm good with him. They don't like me. Mm -hmm. I and I understand some of the reasons why, but I I've tried to correct my behavior over the years and apologize for it, whatever. And, uh, you know, I just, I thought it would be fun to have him come on and I can't, I can't seem to make that happen. Yeah. And I've tried uh, several, every way I know. Yep. So Mm -hmm. short of uh, uh, just calling myself, but I'm just going to get the voicemail. But is it an outgoing message? Is there at least an outgoing message? It's a good question. Then I don't, you know, then I, somehow I see myself ending up in court over that. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I think it might get messy. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So think of the know. headlines, though, Steve. I don't. You know, I think I've had enough. I've had more than my fair share of headlines yeah. this week, especially for just showing up to work. Meyer v. Dahl. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't know the legalities of all that, but I feel it's murky. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, you don't even have to be right to file a lawsuit. You just have to have a hundred bucks or whatever it costs. Right. So, uh, I'm sorry that he didn't call in. I would uh, love to talk to him and have him on for a final segment. I d- we do also have a, a podcast network at doll.com where uh, every Saturday I, I have uh, extensive archives from, uh, from all my time here in Chicago, all 40 years. And so we end up playing a lot of Stephen Gary stuff on that. Yes. And uh, also Kevin's on there. Kevin Matthews does a show every week. So it might be something you might want to check out at doll.com. Mm. Um, but uh, I am uh, I'm just very uh, thankful that they, they let us do this today. Yeah. Preside over this, uh, this last uh, broadcast day. Because, I mean, 40 years, man. You know, 40 years rocking Chicago. Yep. It's a good that's, run. I'm going to say this. That's... That's probably just like uh, about uh, what three generations of uh, kids. Yeah, for sure. 
And he doesn't have an outgoing message. Otherwise, I would do it. It's just okay. the number. Okay. You know, the number you have dialed, mm -hmm. which is what I have to. When you're, a, when you're a boss jock, you don't want to give it away for free like that on an no, outgoing no, message. No, no, no. GM. Let you the don't computer want to do take care of it. Yeah, this. let the computer take care of that. I get paid to talk, mm -hmm. sweetheart. Got to rest the, the I talker. I get paid to talk. All right, so I may I did really make every you guys know, and Doc even helped. Uh, he, he's got some. Uh, we have some mutual friends, and uh, yeah. just couldn't make it happen. So uh, he's got a, you know he got nothing to lose. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't get it. But uh, you got well, fourteen minutes, Gary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks for all the great uh, tweets, and uh, we're getting a lot of good text messages. I've I've really been trying to find time to put people on. Uh, you know. Uh, Folks uh, on the phone on the air. It's just been really tough to jam everything in, and I w I want to save the last segment to to call home and talk to Janet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I promise, if you texted us, or if you tweeted at us, or Facebooked us, or whatever, I will before the weekend is over. I will uh, have I will respond to you, and it really will be me. Yep. Because uh, you know. Because you've a got life. no weekend plans. <laughs> I don't have a life. I just sit there and watch TV. So I'll be doing that. And uh, we'll come back and we'll talk to Janet after uh, we uh, pause here for a second or two. This is a simulcast of the Steve Dahl Show on WLS AM 890. Adios, hasta mañana. The last live show on The Loop. Don't worry, by the end of the night, I'm going to blow this thing wide open. Sponsored by David Hochberg of Pearl Mortgage. Visit PERLDavid.com. All right, welcome back. Uh, last segment of the Simul Blast here. It's Steve Dahl Show on uh, WLUP 97.9. Last live show. Yep. Station, uh, got Jesus takes the wheel at midnight. Mm. And makes a sharp left turn, I imagine, musically. Uh, yeah. I think he might just, I think, yeah, I don't know which way he goes. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You might. He might have to make a right turn to get back to the middle. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Janet's on the phone. We had a, we've had a lot of great people on today. I'd like to say uh, thanks to uh, Kevin Matthews, Joe Walsh. Scott Daniels, Mitch Michaels, Stan Lawrence, Jonathan Brandmeyer, Buzz Kilman, Bruce Wolf, Chet Chet Chet, Danny Bonaducci, mm -hmm. Patty Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. Purple, as I like to call <laughs> her. Purple. And uh, they have been shooting video in here uh, for the Loop website and also the WLS website. No. But we we, uh, we will take all the audio from this and uh, uh, post it up on as a podcast for our subscribers Monday. All right. That's Very cool. cool. Doll.com. Hello, Janet. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. What's the matter? I'm fine. Somebody's calling me on the other line. You know, nothing's ever yeah. smooth here. Yeah. All right. Is it Gary? No, it's, it's some sort of automated stop. call. I think tell it's election to, season or something. Tell him to <laughs> no, stop I calling tried me. I to get a hold of Gary, too. I like this, because yeah. it seems like such a silly opportunity to miss. It's like being the guy who refuses to come to the family reunion because he didn't get to pick the beer or something. It's just yeah. such a, it's an opportunity missed. I agree. But, uh, you know. You tried. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I tried. I'm not going to call down there and leave a, people are like, call and leave a funny message. I'm like. Why would I do that? Yeah, you want to be funny, you know, be funny. Call in. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So we, how do we, did we do okay today? It was great. It was all great. Right. I was on the edge of my seat. I didn't accomplish one darn thing today. Just listening. It was so nice to hear all the people and all the energy. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't represent everybody, but it was certainly a wonderful cross section and a wonderful. Yeah. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna well, cry. Don't cry. And then it's weird because, you know, it's. A, you got fired from the loop a couple times. Once when I was pregnant. Seven once months from a pregnant. Golf course. Um, yeah, once from a golf course. It's not like it was always the most even keel, but it was kind of like a lifeboat that saved us in a important time in our life. And I'm really sentimental about. Yeah, me too. About it, and um, yeah. I know I know that this is hard to do the post mortem and everything, but I'm glad you got to do it because 
it was magical time when you hear all these people. And I, can, I have a funny Jesse Bullitt story too. I know, I was when say, I first met him, uh, Patty Hayes. Wait, 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 wait. We no, talked to Patty. I just want to say he made me look at his new wife's implants right. to admire them. <laughs> right, and then he, but Patty he mentioned that that I get some, but we don't have to go there. No, no, but, but Patty Hayes a little while ago said that he, she left the loop the first time because she went into Jesse Bullitt's office and he said, "We have this great idea to, for marketing you. It's going to be a nude poster." <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, br- we'll airbrush out the nipples. And so, uh, Jesse Bullitt, we were in a, a suite at the Ritz-Carlton. Do- doing what? I don't know. Mm. And his wife uh, had just had breast implants, and he sh- made Janet look at them. Oh. I would have looked at them. I don't know why no one came and got me. Oh. But then he also described what they did to Janet on her own breasts. Yeah. Which I did not hear about until we got home. Mm. Well, because you'd been out of work, you were boxed out of Detroit, yeah. and I did not want to. I knew what you would do if, yeah. if you knew. And then you so can't really I didn't come back in on Monday we were... and just punch a guy in the face. Yeah. So I did speak to him about it, but he's an idiot. So that was the Probably first still time. Is an idiot. That was the first contact with WLUP was somebody drawing lines on my chest to show me where yeah, I could with be his improved. Finger. But... I'm like, why didn't you tell me this was. <laughs> Well, we were there. Cause, cause we we needed the work. <laughs> we yeah. needed an income. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Yeah, yeah. but you know, it's it's just like the it's just like the story of life. You have your good days and your bad days. You have your high points and your low points, and it's just life—a big messy stew of plus and minus. And it, I appreciate so much that it was in our life. And <sighs> yeah. And hey, look, they fired me when Janet was seven months pregnant. I came back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, and Pat that's is um, thirty-seven years crowd. old. Maybe take my ball and go home. Yeah. Pat, yeah, Pat is uh, thirty. What seven. Is, thirty-seven. He's going to be thirty-seven uh, on uh, April twenty-eighth. He's got three mm-hmm. kids. Yep. Janet and I have nine grandkids. We're still married. Yeah. I would like to just mention once again to anybody listening to the loop that we're on every afternoon on WLSAM eight ninety. And we could use some support because <laughs> we are surrounded by, you know. Look what happens when you don't support your local station and they can go away like, boom, yep. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, we're not political. No, yeah, we're we not. keep it no. apolitical. You're the, you're the pause that refreshes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Janet. <laughs> I'll be home to refresh you in just a, <laughs> in a few, in a few minutes. <laughs> All right. All I'm right. honored to be the last. Boy, yeah. Well, you. you. You know, you, uh, hey, without you, I'd be dead. So wouldn't be here doing it. So thank you for all your support over the years. And uh, I know uh, I know people that, you know, Loop fans that, that listen back in the day, all love you too. Well, thank you. I love you. Thank you. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. Can you Bye. Be, can you be naked or something when I get home? <laughs> I just ordered a loop shirt. If only it was here. <laughs> that would be kind of hot. <laughs> I'll see if I can grab one. I think Marv's got some. I'll see if I can grab one from Marv. Okay. All right. See you later. All righty. Bye. Bye. Oh, sorry. I got lucky on that one, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. All right. That's it for us. Thanks for listening. Farewell to the loop. Uh, thanks. Thank you, the loop. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, uh, the loop, for everything you did for me. That's for sure. Ninety-seven point nine. Been very, very good to me. Rock on. And uh, thanks to uh, to Troy and uh, and Wade and uh, the Bulge for uh, letting us do this today. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, you know it's different, mm-hmm. but it was cool. It was fun. Uh, have a great weekend. Don't forget, the loop uh, goes off the air at midnight tonight. Thanks again for listening. Take care. Good night. So long. See ya.